Hello, TYT. This is Michael Tracy. Uh, I've been told repeatedly now that I should introduce myself at the beginning of videos because, oddly enough, not everybody on the internet knows who I am, which is a shock, but whatever. I'm comfortable with making that accommodation. Okay, so I um, wanted to do a quick video here, and um, just as a disclosure, I tried to do this a minute ago um, from a ca my car. Uh, because I know everybody really enjoys the uh, broadcast from a car um, mode of video taking. Um, so that was going to be my, my first attempt at that, and it was going really well, and then I guess I lost my connection or something. Um, so I dipped into a library here in Sonora, Texas. Um, so you can see the story time little thing in the background. Um, so that's fun. Anyway, um, the main reason for this video is because there was some breaking news in the past hour or so. Um, CNN reported that Elliot Abrams, one of the leading neoconservative luminaries of the George W. Bush administration, has been nixed. That's the word they use, nixed, from consideration for a top State Department appointment by Trump, actually the number two State Department position under Rex Tillerson, who is now the Secretary of State. Um, and I wanted to just do a quick video on this in part because um, it came up, this topic came up um, during my interview with Ron Paul uh, earlier this week in Kalut, Texas. Um, and he and, I, he and I discussed the potential that um, Trump could nominate somebody who really is the personification of just the rotted underbelly of American neoconservatism um, to a very powerful position. And um, that caused both Ron Paul and, and me to take a rather pessimistic view, or a relatively pessimistic view of what Trump could accomplish on the foreign policy stage. Um, and I'm not necessarily optimistic now um, that that Abrams has been nixed, but um, it is definitely a positive development. And it also should go to show that the media is really bad at interpreting Trump actions, even still. So the media, and I, I know I'm referring to the media as a monolith here, and they're not a monolith, uh, obviously, but to the extent that they can be referred to as a cohesive unit, the media try, often professes awareness of Trump's manipulative tactics. So Trump, for his entire career, well before he ever ran for president, he went back into the 80s and even 70s, has always tro tried to goad the media into furthering various narratives that he perceived as beneficial to himself. <clears throat> and he did that masterfully during the presidential campaign as part of why he, he ran. And the media, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll claim to be aware of these manip manipulation tactics that Trump so routinely employs, but they'll fall for them every time. So when Trump, when Trump was purportedly going to nominate Mitt Romney for uh, the State Department position, Secretary of State's position. Um, it was basically reported uncritically in the media that this was just an inevitability. And then um, John Bolton being appointed number to the number two slot in the State Department was also reported as an inevitability, um, even though that didn't happen. And now... Um, this Abrams appointment isn't going to happen either, notwithstanding several days of coverage, which strongly insinuated, if not just outright asserted, that it was a certainty that Abrams would be appointed. <clears throat> um, and some of this originates with Andrea Mitchell, bizarrely enough, the longtime NBC correspondent. Is that her title now? I don't know. Um, but she's sort of a very... Uh, played out media figure, let's say. And she kept getting leaked information that proves totally bogus about who Trump is going to appoint. So if you look at my Twitter, I just tweeted out some screenshots of how she reported the potential Bolton nomination for, this, for, this, uh, for the Justice Department, or I'm sorry, for the State Department. <clears throat> and that, that reporting was then picked up and widely disseminated by her various media colleagues to, to give the impression that it was an inevitability that Bolton would be appointed. She did the exact same thing for Abrams uh, last week. <clears throat> um, 
So if you go look at, I think it was last Friday, the, the, the Abrams rumor was, was reported by Mitchell. And I don't know why this goes to her, maybe because she's easily duped. That's a possibility. Um, but obviously somebody within the Trump orbit, it might not, might not even necessarily be in Trump's orbit. It could be partially directed by him, partially not. It's hard to say exactly. But somebody with some degree of knowledge accurately perceives Andrea Mitchell to be not the brightest bulb in the chandelier. <laughs> so um, she kept getting fed this, this phony information. And um, after she was fed the information about Abrams, it was then basically reported as, as a truism that he would be nominated. Now, my, my uh, take at the time was that this was probably a bait and switch. Abrams had gone publicly and denounced Trump on numerous occasions called him unfit and worse, um, and basically was one of the top Republican enemies of Trump during the Republican primary process last year. So it seems very dubious that Trump would all of a sudden um, relent on his longstanding aversion to rewarding people who come out and attack him publicly and then give Abrams this very powerful position, this also notwithstanding Abrams having been central to the arch to um, orchestrating the Iraq war, which Trump is, is con pretty consistently been against. Um, and actually repeated his opposition as, as president a number of times. <clears throat> so um, Abrams will not be appointed. Um, that's a good thing for American foreign policy. That's not to say that Trump is going to be a wonderful force in the American foreign policy arena, but, um, you know, merely not having these um, neoconservatives who really should have been cast out of polite society a long time ago um, entering the government now, I think, is something to look at favorably at the very least. Um, and also it should be a, yet another lesson that the media coverage of Trump is often just flat wrong and often shuns any contextualization and often has this air of certainty about it that is really not founded in anything legitimate. Um, so, yeah, go back and watch that Ron Paul uh, interview, which I thought, I think was pretty well received, uh, where we, we discussed just this, and uh, hopefully, and, and thankfully our, our suspicions or our, our reservations about um, Abrams didn't end up coming to pass. Um, in terms of him getting appointed. And then, yeah, that's it. And hopefully soon I'll be able to do this from the car and really get my, get my street cred um, in that area. Okay, so long.